Hello everyone, welcome back, this is Easy Learn AI. Today, let's learn about RNN together. RNN stands for Recurrent Neural Network. It is a neural network commonly used for processing sequential data, such as time series data, which involves continuous information. RNN fundamentally involves remembering past information while processing new information. For example, as stock price fluctuations or words in a sentence. It can effectively handle data where the order is important. If a CNN extracts spatial features from image data, RNN can be thought of as extracting temporal features from time series data for learning. Indeed, RNNs have evolved incorporating architectures like LSTM and GRU, leading to the development of transformer models, which could be considered the grandfather of today's models like ChatGPT. So today, I'd like to introduce the structure of RNN and provide a detailed overview of the algorithm through which RNN learns from time series data. The structure of RNN is simpler than you might think. First of all, what RNN does is take an input vector x, perform internal operations, and output the output vector y hat. This is the forward propagation process of an RNN. The types of input vector x and output vector y hat can vary widely, whether it's individual letters, words, musical notes, or stock price changes, as long as we can process them effectively to use as time series data, all of these are possible with RNNs. What are the benefits of processing time series data, then? Let's assume, for example, that this RNN is a model for translating English into Korean. Usually, when you see the word bat, it can be translated as both bat, a baseball bat, or bok chui, an animal. However, when the preceding word is baseball, there is a high probability that an English word bat will be translated as a Korean word, bat, a baseball bat. In this way, RNN mimics the brain's ability, memory, and when translating, baseball, its internal state, H, is set based on the information related to the baseball that it has processed. Through this internal state, baseball is translated into Yagu, and when the word bat is to be translated, the internal state generated when translating baseball affects the translation of bat. This is the essence of RNN. And it is updated as an internal state H that combines baseball and bat. Re resulting in bat having a higher probability of being translated as bat, a baseball bat, rather than bok chui, an animal. Now, let's explore how forward and backward propagation occur within the model by introducing numbers. To represent the temporal process of computation spatially, let's unfold the RNN sequentially like this, side by side. And to better understand the temporal updates of H, let's modify the arrows as follows. Alright, let's start by examining the input values. To simplify the explanation, let's use one-hot vectors for the input values. A one-hot vector is a vector where all values are zero, except for one value which is set to one. As you can see, the same word corresponds to the same vector. And, different words are indeed composed of different vectors. Thus, in theory, if the vector length, n, is sufficiently long, you can have a one-to-one -one correspondence between vectors and all the words in the world. In this video, for convenience, let's use two one-hot vector dictionaries with n equals 3. And let's use an input sequence of two vectors, baseball, bat, which means we'll input two vectors sequentially as vertical vectors. Once the input sequence is fully input, the forward propagation is completed. Let's start by inputting the one-hot vector for the baseball first. The formula for calculating the internal state H is as follows. The complete formula should include the bias term B, so it would be. In this video, 
for the sake of simplicity, let's omit the bias term from the calculations. WH0 represents this part. UX1 represents this part. Hyperbolic tangent is the activation function used in RNNs. Alright, let's go ahead and perform the calculations by inputting numbers. I will set the necessary variables for the initial values as follows. Let's calculate them. Then, the new internal state H1 has been calculated as follows. Next, O1 is as follows. You have calculated O1. And finally, to obtain Y1 hat, you can apply the softmax function to O1. The softmax function, in simple terms, is a convenient function that converts the raw output of a neural network into probabilities. In the case of O1, it is calculated as follows. So, you've calculated Y1 hat up to this point. Then, you can calculate, y2, hat using the same method. One important thing to note in RNNs is that the previously calculated value of h1 is used in the calculation of h2. Alright, you have now generated the output values for each input sequence. However, as you can see, the predicted values appear to have a significant difference from the actual values. The difference between predicted values and actual values is commonly referred to as loss or cost. There are various formulas for calculating this loss, but here, we will use the cross-entropy loss function. The reason for using cross-entropy is that it makes the backpropagation calculations much easier. When used in conjunction with the softmax function, as we'll see in the subsequent calculations, now, let's proceed with backpropagation to update the weights. In RNNs, backpropagation is often referred to as BPTT. BPTT stands for backpropagation through time. In a nutshell, backpropagation is the process of adjusting connection weights in the direction that reduces the loss. In an RNN, there are three sets of connection weights. While this RNN may appear complex when unrolled over time. In practice, it is a simple neural network with three nodes and three sets of connection weights. O represents the process of calculating softmax and is not an actual node in the network. Therefore, you only need to update these three sets of connection weights, V, W, and U. Weight updates in an RNN, like other neural network models, are performed using gradient descent and backpropagation. Therefore, the formulas for updating V, W, and U are as follows, where alpha is the learning rate. So, we only need to calculate the following gradients to train the RNN. Now, let's calculate them one by one. I've reduced the text and image size a bit, because I need a room to write many equations. First, Del L del V represents the gradient with respect to the entire input sequence, and it can be expressed as follows. To calculate del L del V, we use the chain rule. Using the chain rule, we can decompose del L1, del V and del L2, del V as follows. And this part can be simplified for gradient calculation due to the use of cross entropy and softmax as follows. I plan to show this derivation process for this part in another video. Please stay tuned and look forward to it. And, del O1, del V can be calculated from the following formula. Therefore, del L del V can be calculated as follows. Now, it's time to calculate del L del W. Let's start by calculating del L2, del W in reverse chronological order. Del L2, 
del W can be expressed as follows, applying the chain rule. The meaning of this equation is the change in the weight W alters the value of H2 and how this change affects the value of L2. However, the change in W that affects the value of L2 is not the only factor. The change in W at T equals 1 also plays a role in bringing about a change in H1 and furthermore, the change in H1 leads to a change in H2 and the change in H2 ultimately results in a change in Y2 hat. In summary, the change in del L2 del W is influenced by the change in H2 at T equals 2 as well as the changes in H2 induced by the variations in H1 at T equals 1 collectively contribute to the overall impact. So, when expressing del L2, del W in a more comprehensive form, it becomes as follows. This part represents the relationship and changes between H1 and H2. And this part can be transformed in the same manner as we did earlier like this. And using the formula O2 equals VH2, it can be expressed as follows. Now, let's calculate del H2, del W. As we've seen before, the relationship between H and W is as follows. However, it seems somewhat challenging to calculate del H2, del W with this equation alone. So, let's try using the following trick. Let's divide the equation into two parts like this. Ultimately, del H2, del Z2, becomes 1 minus H2 square. Then, let's rewrite the equation. If we substitute each part, we get. You can see that it becomes like this. Furthermore, del H2, del Z2, is reused here, and del Z2, del H1, can be derived here. Continuing to substitute and solve the equation, we can summarize it as follows. Now, let's start plugging in values from this point. Then, you get the calculated values like this. This value can be used in two places in common. Plugging in the values like this. The calculation results in the following. And, del H1, del Z1 becomes 1 minus H1 square again. And del Z1 del W is equal to H0 according to the formula. However, since we set H0 as 0, 0, the latter part can be treated as 0. However, in most cases, H0 can be the last hidden state of the previous input sequence. In that case, we need to calculate the latter part as well. H0 is 0, 0, it simplifies to 0. Therefore, we have obtained the value of del L2, del W. Continuing on, you can also calculate del L1, del W using the same method. Here, since we set H0 as 0, 0, the value of del L1 del W becomes 0, but this is because I set H0 as 0, 0, for the sake of computational convenience. As mentioned earlier, in actual RNN implementations, the value of H0 often corresponds to the last calculated H, T1, from the preceding input sequence. Through these calculation steps, we have successfully determined del L del W. Now, what remains is to calculate del L del U. Let's start by calculating del L2, del U for del L del U. Del L2, del U is not significantly different from the way we calculate del L del W. We still use the chain rule for this calculation. By using the following formula, you can substitute it into del L2, del U as follows, and by using the following formula. You can substitute it like this. This part can reuse the values we derived when calculating del L del W earlier. 
calculating it like this. These two parts can be applied in common. Now, let's substitute the remaining values as well. And this way, we can obtain the values. Similarly, we can calculate del L1, del U using the same method. The final value of del L del U is as follows. So, we have now calculated del L del V, del L del W, and del L del U. Using these gradients with gradient descent, we can iteratively update the weights U, W, and V to facilitate learning. This is the approximate process of backpropagation through time, BPTT, in RNN, which allows the network to learn and update its weights over time. Today, I provided an introduction to RNN and a detailed explanation of the forward and backward propagation processes. I prepared this video with detailed equations and proof processes to provide a deeper understanding of RNN beyond a superficial grasp of the concept. I hope that these internal computation processes, which can be challenging to understand, have been somewhat helpful to you in your deep learning research and learning journey. Thank you for watching today's video, and I wish you great success in your research and learning journey. Thank you. Bye. See you next time. Your interest and love for this channel help a lot in preparing these lectures, so please don't forget to subscribe this channel and click the like button.